Back to profit then after the losses of last time. Um, tell me a little about, so th clearly th that was a story of COVID-19 impact. Tell me a little about how that has evolved and, and hit the business and worked through. Sure. So the, the COVID losses in 2020 were actually quite large for us, but especially on the property casualty side. What we see develop here in the first half of 2021 is we continue, unfortunately, to have major mortality losses, especially in the United States in the first quarter of this year, but they've continued uh, to a lesser degree in the second quarter. We booked a loss of $870 million related to COVID. 810 of that is in our life and health re-business. The property losses have, in fact, reduced to a very small number, and we don't expect them to grow any time in the next two quarters either. We think the losses for, for mortality will continue, unfortunately, uh, but as uh, major markets continue the vaccination programs and we see people actually responding very well to these hospitalizations down, deaths down, that that number will also be a fraction of what it currently is. Yeah, sadly, the mortality uh, does continue. And some of your competitors, I'm thinking of Munich Re here, talking about other geographies as a focus, India and South Africa. Um, depending on your geographic exposure, you've already referenced the United States. Where, where else do you, do you uh, see the impact? So, so there are some other markets. Um, earlier in the pandemic, the UK w was a source of some losses for us. Uh, with respect to the, uh, the increase in mortality, obviously the, the spike that you saw or have seen in, in India and in South Africa and Latin America are all uh, tragedies from a human point of view. With respect to insured losses, at least for Swiss Re, uh, they're um, not trivial, but they're, they're not anywhere near as important as the major market of the United States for the mortality insurance that we have. OK. And going on to another, another set of events, I suppose, that we keep very firmly in our minds when we think of the reinsurance sector, and that is uh, climate events. And I'm thinking of the flooding in particular that took place in Europe earlier on this year. I see from your statement this morning, you put that in with the social unrest in South Africa and you talk about a mid-triple-digit million US dollar loss for Swiss Re. Uh, sticking with the flooding, how do you go about assessing then what kind of impact this is going to have? on a business like Swiss Re? Sure. So, so this is, in fact, our core business, the, the uh, reinsurance and, and, and direct insurance through corporate solutions business of natural catastrophes. In the first half of the year, uh, it, it, in spite of what were approximately 700 million of NatCat losses, we were staying showing that this profit of 1 billion, including the COVID, 1.7 billion uh, ex-COVID for the half year. Here in the third quarter, we do expect that the floods in Germany and surrounding countries, the Netherlands and Benelux, will have a significant impact. Uh, it will be a, a major loss for the industry. It's just too early to put any precise numbers here. We're working closely with our primary companies to try to understand their losses and what part of their losses actually then get passed on to us as an ultimate risk absorber in the, in the system. Yes, and, and you must have to make your own assumptions about how frequently these extreme weather events will, will occur then, John. What kind of assumptions do you make when it comes to flooding and to wildfires uh, over, the, over the decades to come? What kind of assumptions are you making about the, the frequency with which we will see these events? So, so we've made so, some major adjustments in our models over recent years precisely for this. What we refer to is the secondary perils, uh, oftentimes related to what uh, uh, the scientists refer to as convection storms that result in either the, the flash flooding uh, that you saw in, in northern Europe, hail storms, other major uh, events uh, related to regional weather systems, as well as the, the major uh, drought so that we see in many parts of the world, especially in the Western United States and Canada this year and, and, and actually in the, in the last couple of years. And so as we've modeled this, we assume that the frequency and the severity of these losses will increase. We put that into our own pricing model. It's had us walk away from some risks that we don't think uh, are correctly priced, but also encouraging uh, the industry to be more realistic about what the ultimate cost will be of these new 
uh, frequency and, as you say, severity of extreme weather. What do you think, thinking about the European floods, uh, John, what do you think will be the impact on the ability to access insurance in those areas or the pricing of that insurance? Do you think it's more likely that we see insurers pulling away from offering insurance at all or just that the premiums will increase? Well, I, I, I hope that, that um, we'll find a, a better solution, which is to offer insurance, but also to encourage people uh, to, to find ways to improve the resiliency. Uh, I can give you the example here in Switzerland, after a series of, of similarly catastrophic floods in 2005, the insurance industry worked together with the Swiss government to try to improve the, the flood controls and the building codes to make uh, the, the affected areas safer going forward and, and that allowed those uh, communities to, to maintain access to insurance. I, I think governments in general are going to have to think more holistically about how we, we can improve the infrastructure, understand that what had been a, a one in a 200 year risk is now a one in a 50 year risk or maybe even a one in a 20 year risk and adjust accordingly. But there should be ways that we can solve this. It may be more expensive because the losses may be bigger, but we can also at the same time find ways to make the, the world more resilient.